Good evening, everyone. This is Mahesh, and I'm, uh, I should really be thanking Yon to organize this stuff in this community, and I'm really glad to be here. Uh, cool. So obviously, I'm talking about React lifecycle methods, and uh, probably a uh, few months back, we got a big news uh, by Dan Abrama, mostly that uh, a lot of uh, component lifecycles are breaking, deprecating changes. He launched hooks which Kian talked about, and a lot more things are happening, right? Cool. So probably the agenda of today's talk uh, uh, majorly is to, uh, we together will take a deep dive in what exactly is uh, React Lifecycle methods. What are the new changes? I'm not gonna talk about the older one because that's sort of is not, uh, not uh, be in context or we should not care much about that what was earlier. So it is all about what are the changes and uh, from uh, the moment a component renders or it starts uh, to what happens until it is unmounted. We'll talk everything about it. Just uh, even before I start, I just want to know that how proficient we are on um, uh, React uh, lifecycle methods or so that I can uh, decide that how much deep should I go? Is it uh, experts, any experts? Oh, everyone's laughing. <laughs> okay. Oh, one expert. We have got one expert. That's great. Okay, so majorly I'm thinking just medium. So even uh, I can relate that, yeah, it's not that uh, straightforward. So let's try to jump into it. Okay, myself. I'm Mahesh. I am a full stack developer and uh, I love React, yeah. And uh, I'm a storyteller, so in, uh, I do uh, share or do some podcasting on YouTube. That's in Hindi language, so that's Indian, so you would not understand. And <laughs> I'm a blogger. I am quite active in medium.com. My few of the blogs have got published in multi-language, like REST API guidelines, React component lifecycle methods, and few other stuff. You can follow me on Medium. Let's be connected. I'm open source contributor as well. Like I have got a couple of. Uh, 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 NPM library like in uh, hooks and, and using uh, tooltip, React tooltip. And uh, yes, uh, in India, uh, uh, just before Singapore, I was in India. I did a couple of, a lot of uh, React training in India as well as South Africa. So yeah, and I'm ex McKinsey, and right now I'm, I'm working in a startup. I'm a tech lead. That's me on a summary. Let's start. Let's start our deep dive. Uh, before we start with the, what exactly is component lifecycle method, this is the one line intro of React. This is the official introduction of React that says React.js is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. If you see, I did bold user interfaces. So in React, we only create user interfaces. What is inter user interface? User interface is any area, any zone where user goes, interacts, and basically he commands. So that's why it's an u interface which is led by the user. And we as a developer, we provide that playground for the user to uh, interact with our app. So that's user interface. Now, cool. Uh, why uh, should we discuss and why should we know about uh, React Lifecycle method that's uh, before even going into it, uh, knowing that is really important because you should know the value and then uh, we should be doing uh, why exactly we are learning and why exactly you should be listening to me on this talk. So maybe be, uh, I, I just want to uh, put, out, put one analogy that how exactly React looks like. So if you see this is a bunch of television and uh, every television has got its own connectivity to power, its own connectivity to maybe uh, compact display, so that you can control every of the television on its own. And this whole combination is React. Every small television is a component, and you can control individual component on its own. Right? So, so uh, for, for example, why, how, how, what is the role of uh, lifecycle component methods? For example, you want to program your all the television that whenever you start television number one, it should show up, uh, this is television one and this of this brand and then it starts displaying. And then probably you want to control on the television number three, 
that whenever it starts or whenever someone changes the channel it should show a different message so that you can have more control and these are components we'll come back to on this again uh, taking the same analogy on the interface so we, we can actually divide the whole every portion of it as a separate component and each component has got its own control for example whether it show or not or for, for example when you uh, when you click on follow button it can actually call a api so so the other components need not know about what exactly the other component is doing now as i was saying that you can actually uh, connect every television with its own compact displayer and that's why if you hear a lot mounted did mount will mount so you can actually imagine that whenever you mount a disc on the compact displayer that is will mount did mount or so, uh, the, the, this analogy is just to set your expectation that whenever we will we'll talk about did mount will mount did update how exactly we can relate with with the uh, compact display so whenever we say mount so you what do you exactly do you take a disc compact disc uh, cd and then you mount it on the player and it plays from there we'll come back to on it again okay why life cycle is important because though uh, that was more about setting up the context now we should discussing we should be discussing why life cycle is important uh, everything everything in this universe goes through a life cycle you maybe any company any tree everything goes through a life cycle method it takes birth it grows it grows and one fine day it starts degrading and one fine day it will die and same happens with our react component as well so it uh, will prepare itself to mount it or to get birth onto the browser and browser is that uh, uh, area or that player where it is going to mount it or going to be played around and uh, then uh, it will update get the updates that is where it grows because it, it's taking new update by clicking off the button taking new props setting up uh, changing the state that is updation and then one fine day when you close that model for example or close the website that is where it, it is unmounted okay and to, apart from that also why uh, we understand that right that it is important and why it is important because if you know that if you know the hook points that at this point of time something is going to happen you can plan better right for example maybe take your your example when you were about to get birth your parents did plan some stuff for you right you were coming or maybe you were not well welcomed that is another story if you would <laughs> okay so uh, whenever you're getting going to get birth your parents are planning that okay one fine day you, you, all the toys all the clothes needs to be there and when you are going to go get to the school and your parents know that at this point of time my child is going to the school i need to search a better school imagine if your parents never knew that what time uh, you are getting birth or what time you are about to go to the school then they cannot plan efficiently and same happens with us also as reactive lovers for example let me give you the example of youtube uh, for example you want to optimize your youtube app and uh, uh, obviously youtube buffers and takes uh, battery and it takes uh, your network bandwidth as a resource which consumes to buffer the video now if the user uh, switches back to another app then actually you can track that whenever this app is out of focus i can stop the buffering i can stop taking the battery this way you are optimizing your apps and if you know all the hook points where and what thing is happening you can plan accordingly in a better way you know very much efficient efficient way okay so that is that is why it is important and we should be talking about it in detail okay talking about phases these are the three phases uh, mounting updating unmounting as i talked uh, told you that whenever your component is about to mount on the browser you get one set of function where you can perform something that is where the that phase is called mounting phase when it is it is still not mounted yet but it still it is in the process and then when it is mounted already now for example if the button clicks on uh, if the user clicks on some button so it is updating it is get, getting updates 
uh, whether that is uh, a state update via props or some some other some other way so that whole phase is called updating and last is unmounting obviously when the component is going to unmount or get close for example if you hit back button or if you hit submit button it should go to next page or if you hit the close button in a model so that model is going to close so you can do some some stuff so we'll we'll go in deep in that okay this is the end state don't get confused or don't get to, uh, in a problem that what exactly is this because the same was my reaction when i started with uh, react that what exactly this diagram or what exactly the whole life cycle component is so this is our end state by the end of this talk my target is to that we together should be able to understand decode every part of it i know few of people already know but i'm still talking in a generalized way so that everyone uh, uh, is on the same page so by the end of the talk we should be able to understand this diagram okay what does it matter i already talked about we should know the hooks so that we can better op optimize it this is again the same analogy which i tried to put that every component has its own control for example uh, you as as a person has got your own control and i as a person has got my own control so we can parallelly run our uh, life cycle methods for example when I, when i am ready to go to school in the similar way you will get your own when you are ready to get go to the school that's why everything is separate every component is separate okay to uh, now because we are going to get the deep dive in the each of the methods of uh, life cycle of the react life cycle uh, let's uh, imagine that we are going to build a uh, contra music player some music player so that we can better understand that in which use case which method is going to be used uh, let's start with mounting so mounting is that phase uh, where on the browser the dom or the component is still not mounted it is preparing itself to get mounted on the browser for the first time so the first function is obviously constructor uh, uh, as we know in even in oops also the constructor is the first function that gets executed where you can do the stuffs like setting up your first state initial values and you can set you using the default props you can also set the default props as well so for example if you want to do set, start your music player with a value of volume 70% and status as paused you can set here so that your component whenever mounts on the browser it starts with this value so we should, it's pretty straightforward initially in the previous version of react that is 16.3 and uh, below there was another method called component will mount and uh, what exactly happened that comp and if you see that component will mount and the constructor are are pretty much same so constructor also call, gets called first time before render component will mount also gets f uh, called first time only one time before mount so and even there was a huge discussion going on that we should merge it and finally in this 16.4 we merged it and we have got only one that is constructor the next method is a static get derived state from props let's try to decode it if you see uh, this method is used for getting the derived state from props now uh, what is the use case uh, a lot of times as Re react developers uh, our state depends on prop for example uh, when you pass a prop as a function and then you uh, your your component depends on the props and you want to sync it so this is that case for example uh, uh, that's why the the name is pretty much very clear that get derived state from props so we want to get a new state from props whenever the whenever state is dependent on prop for example uh, you are setting the state uh, age value from date of birth which is coming from uh, your props so you will do some processing where you will take the uh, date of birth current date minus and do the number of years or age and that you will set it to the state so that that kind of con conversation or that kind of conversion happens in this particular method this is just to give an example for example uh, uh, and this is a static so you do not get the access of this uh, and you you will get you will be getting the props and a state only uh, so you can actually do you can compare that a state dot value is not equal to props dot value then you actually return a new state and you can also return a null when it is null it does nothing when you return a valid object it merges with your original state 
whatever you started with on the constructor so for example if you say uh, your uh, props is dependent or your states is dependent on props and that is a function which processes something so this is that use case when you're you want to sync your state with the props and do some calculations some processing uh, next method after constructor and then uh, one method gets called get a state uh, get get derived state from props and then actually the render happens in the render this is that method where equivalent HTML DOM is generated and then it will be sent to the browser so render is the final method everyone knows that because we start with render right and then actually mounting happens after render processes one particular object with your props with your states and everything it generates one DOM and then it mounts it and one another function is called that is component did mount as the name suggests that component did mount it says that com component has already be already been mounted to the browser and what is the use case of this for example you want to access uh, the DOM and you want to use jQuery library to set the graph or maybe d3 library to set the graph on this value so whenever you want to access one particular or DOM it has to be bound, mounted on the browser first so that's why all the calculations all the processing of graph or you want to use high chart or some other library which accesses DOM then you need to do all this processing in component did mount because just just try to understand uh, you have got your react world where and if you want to your high chart to take the DOM then high chart doesn't know what react is or what their internal processing is happening he uh, high chart only knows browser DOM which we see in the elements in the console of, of the Chrome so that's why uh, once the component is mounted we are pretty much sure that my component is on the browser and another library can access the DOM to do some processing or modify it okay so this is just a quick uh, deprecated methods which uh, uh, have been deprecated from 16.3 so component will mount has been removed component will receive receive props has also been removed component will update is also removed we'll talk about these two fun uh, these two function in next uh, life cycle uh, and uh, right now it is not totally removed it is just prefixed with unsafe and in uh, react version 17 it will be removed so you're free to use and why they have done that so that you can slowly migrate to uh, new lifecycle methods or using hooks and all and just to remind uh, why this is again important if you want to totally understand hooks uh, then also understanding of react lifecycle method methods is really important because hook is uh, is the side product or uh, the resultant to make make your whole lifecycle method is a little bit of easier that is that is the hook so we should be understanding layer react lifecycle better so coming to that particular uh, diagram we have already talked about constructor then after constructor we call get derived as straight props then it renders and then uh, it commits to the browser it sends to the browser and then finally we run component dead mount now we are going to talk about updating so this particular process this particular phase is when the component has been mounted already and render function has ran at least once or the first time so when we start with, uh, with updating updating can happen by basically three rough ways one is when you change the props props if you do not know what is prop prop is like function parameter so component is a function and props is a parameter so if you change the parameter of props then it will update your react component or when you change the state the internal state of your component then it will update the uh, component another way is another function that is force update you can from any point of time you can forcefully update your react that is force, force update which is not recommended bad practice uh, so we'll talk about the uh, update by props and update by state so the first function is obviously called get derived state uh, from props so this is the same method which we talked about when you want to sync your props and state and do want to do some processing this is the first method that is get called and then after uh, get derived state uh, from props the next method is called should component update as the name suggests it says that it expects true or false right should, it is a question should it update the component so yeah so you can for example um, your any render of component processes a lot of values and it goes through a heavy cycle and you want to get control on that whether 
I every time some prop or a state changes, do I want to re-render the component or not? So you can control that thing in this particular function should uh, should component update and if it returns false then it will not go to the render it will not reload or it will not remount it and if it returns true then it will go to the render and remount it and, and if you do not write this function by default it returns true so we have more control uh, but using we should be using it very carefully this is again not recommended even by the official reacting but some cases we need to so this is just a quick example in the switch component update you get the next props and next state and the current state and current prop is available in this so you can do this dot props or this dot state and you can do comparison and you can actually return a boolean to have a more control on a component rendering so this is what i'm talking about from the diagram that after we get a new prop or we change by set state we get the get it get derived state from prop after it passes we go to the should component update if it is true it will go to render if it is false it will stop over there uh, updating phase obviously then after the after this particular uh, function the next function that is called and this is again newly introduced in 16.4 get a snapshot before update this is uh, when I when I started on the day one when I tried to understand this particular thing this took a little more time to actually understand it I hope that uh, I'm able to convey the same what I understood feel free to question me back if you do not get it so uh, get a snapshot before update let me first tell you the use case why and the bench do we need to use this uh, this is uh, one of the very rare function you will use but it's important to know uh, for example, uh, you are doing a tooltip and while your tooltip is moving, you change some state and your component reloads, then there is at the worst condition, there is potentially some chances that while you are moving it and the component reloads, you will lose the track that where or you will you will face few of the laggings that because while you were moving it it re updated and as the react virtual dom works that whenever at in a binary tree in a tree of a component whenever it sees delta it deletes all the child and it re uh, reattaches all the parent so at worst case for example if you're moving the tooltip and something gets update you might lose this uh, animation you might lose this flow this will be not smooth and same applies for your uh, scroll bar as well for example if you are scrolling up and down and you are showing a list and at that point at some point of time if API responds you back and you update the state at some point of time you might lose the track so get a snapshot before update is a function where uh, before writing to the browser you get the previous state and you just wire it up i'll i'll, I'll let you know i will talk about it so uh, let me tell you show you a quick example so you can see here uh, that i got get a snapshot before update and as the name suggests that i want to get a snapshot of the component before it actually updates so that i can continue after it is updated i think you will get it so we get the props we get the states and then by doing some uh, calculations or whatever logic is there you can return a object from here that is a snapshot you return a snapshot and whatever is snapshot you return that is snapshot is ca uh, caught in did update and did update is similar to did mount so remember did mount in a whole life cycle did mount will happen only once because you're saying that how many times your component mounted it's only once but did update will happen any number of time update is happening right so this is did component component did update so uh, in component did update whatever you return here you will get here a snapshot and here you can set that current scroll height is from the snapshot so just think that uh, you are moving a tooltip and here the update is happening before actually rewriting on the browser you're taking the current snapshot and it updating it and you are passing it to the uh, newly updated DOM uh, the older snapshot so that you can wire it up as simple as that. I try to make it simple but yes this is the definition and this is where it is going to be used does it make sense yes no or should I repeat yes please I'm just curious about the now tag that's a component 
out there. So does it mean if um, if you are not in the intermediate stage where you are remembering that meanwhile you are scrolling, then you will just not call the thread? Is that, is that yeah, yeah, you, you got it right. So be, because uh, ev ev on every because you see this particular function will get called on every update. On every update, this might not be the condition that I want to. I am installing. So you, you, uh, if this condition is not met, you did not lose your uh, flow. Then you are returning null, and if it is null, then that you are skipping that fun that condition. And whenever on that specific case, you are handing over or you are continuing that flow. Okay. So this is get a snapshot before update. As the name is like get a snapshot before actually updating it, so that I can hand over after it, it is updated. As simple as that. And obviously, the next function is component did update. Now, as I was repeating, that component did update, component did mount will happen only once. And after re rendering or mounting, whenever you update via state or via prop, uh, it will always call that did update. So that you can again, now the use case for this, you can again, what if, uh, in component did mount, you set the high li uh, uh, D3 or high charts library to access the DOM. And now, whenever something has changed, now you should be again telling high chart that now update again. So this is that function uh, in did update. Now you will get a notion that we are duplicating few of the things in did mount and in did update. We are again duplicating it. Then obviously you can uh, solve it in various ways, like passing a callback, pa passing a function, or taking out in a separate file, something like that. But that can be solved. And then obviously, uh, uh, and after did update, before did update, we get the render. So uh, it ha happens the render, and then get a snapshot before update, and then it did update. Yeah. So I talked about did update. So maybe uh, let's have a quick look uh, what exactly and where we are in terms of our end goal. So mounting, we understand constructor happens, and then we call get derived state from props, and then in mounting, the render co gets called then here is that process in the browser it is writing it is committing to the browser and then it calls the component dead mount after it is mounted then updating starts update can be done by three ways new props or set, changing the state by calling set state or force update when you do force update it directly uh, goes to it again passes through this function and then it directly goes to render it does not go to should component update because you are saying that forcefully updated and it does not call the dead update. When talking about new props and set state, uh, should component update we talked about, if it is true, it goes ahead. If it is false, it stops there. Then render calls, then get a snapshot before update. Now you see that here is the uh, function moment where commit is happening, commit to the browser. So component did a snapshot before update. It takes the previous mm -hmm. snapshot and handed, hands over to component did did update so that you can wire it up cool does it make sense uh, now the next process next is unmounting so when you are closing the model or when you want to close or collapse this uh, uh, this particular component uh, this is where that function is get called and the use case is pretty much straightforward maybe you want to destroy all the charts you want to uh, remove the linkage or remove the library, high chart library. You want to clear the user session. You want to log out the user. All those clearing stuff happens here. And obviously, uh, if you see in this particular diagram in unmounting, there is no component did unmount. Do we need that? We cannot actually. For, it's similar like when you are about to die, just let me know. I'll come you and give you water or some of food. And then I say that when you died, then come back to me, tell me that when you died. So obviously, if something is unmounted, they cannot come and tell us. So that's why after will unmount, there is no did unmount. Cool. Uh, integrate API call. Okay, yeah, this is important. So now in the whole lifecycle thing, there's one of the very important questions. Where do we integrate the APIs? Where, if you want to call API, so that should happen. Component did mount mostly but there are some other use cases for different kind of use cases but it should be here why here uh, and even when component will unmount was there in the uh, react so a lot there were a lot of uh, confusion around the whether it should be in component will unmount will mount or component did mount so the simple straightforward answer is that uh, uh, for example if you're doing server-side rendering as well 
so server side rendering will call constructor will call uh, throughout the uh, render it will not commit and it will not do the dead mount so if you put in constructor or uh, some other function before committing it to the browser then on the server side rendering when you are generating your html files for seo uh, optimization it will try to call the api even if it is not loaded on the browser so you should be doing on this part that's why this particular lower version lower side is mostly when it is on the browser did update or did mount so please make sure that you uh, integrate your apis in uh, did mount and obviously um, uh, you want to call api once and not every time component update mostly but there are some other use case on every button click you want to get response in that case it will be did update but whenever the use case is that you just want a api call on load it should be going here in did mount does it make sense yes <laughs> i'm answering <laughs> okay okay cool thank you that was it and uh, yeah Stay in touch. Uh, I'm new to Singapore. Just two months back, I moved here. So let's be connected. I'm happy to uh, discuss more. Let's uh, uh, get over some coffee or invite me on uh, some dinner. I'm happy to join. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. And there is a quick feedback form. If you can feedback, give me some feedback that will be helpful to, for me. You can either scan or you can take the tiny URL. Uh, thank you so much, guys. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Yon, for inviting. Thank you. Thank you.